Hi friends, Dr. Lisa here, cancer physical therapist and bone fit trained professional. And I thank you for being here and joining me today. This is Brick House Bones Volume 4, where I give you four exercises every week that target the specific areas you need to prevent a fracture and a fall related to osteoporosis or osteopenia. All right. Thank you, thank you so much. I am so grateful for all of you that have liked and shared a video and subscribed. If you haven't already, this is the greatest way that you can show me you appreciate me making this free content for you. So please take a moment right now, hit the subscribe button, like this video, and absolutely share it with your friends. And as always, I love your comments because it just gives me inspiration to keep doing this for you. All right, I have four great exercises today. These are really, really important kind of baseline exercises to get us started in the right direction. First off, we're gonna work on posture and work on that area where we get that hump in the middle of our back and having to prevent that. And the mistake I see a lot of people make when they do it is they're working a lot with their neck and that's okay, you can get a nice stretch for the neck but where we really have to work is here in the middle of the spine, in the sternum, in the heart center, and lifting that part of the spine up. So focusing on your sternum, the center of your, kind of where your ribs come together, the center of your chest, where your heart is. And as you're lifting up there, we're also going to do a reach. We're going to do it with our breath with an inhale. So inhale, reach, and look up and relax the arms down. Really lifting through heart center. Inhale up, reach up, look up, and relax the arms back down. Now, if looking up is uncomfortable for your neck for any reason, no problem. Keep your eyes going straight ahead. Inhale, reach up, look up, lift the heart. Focus on lifting the heart and reaching the arms. If your shoulders don't like to do it, that's okay. Inhale and release. Inhale and release. And you can also do it with just one arm if you have one sore shoulder. So pick whatever variation works well for you. No arms, one arm, or both arms, but work on lifting that heart and do that at least 10 times. And we wanna work that in at least twice a week this week, okay? This is this week's video for you. Exercise number two is our balance video. And for balance, we're gonna work on having our feet in a narrower stance, we call this tandem. So we wanna put the one foot in front of the other or as close to in front of the other as we feel safe doing. Now, I have a chair beside me, absolutely. Create safety in your environment. Have a countertop or a chair beside you while you do that. But we want you to feel challenged. It, when you are working your balance in a way that challenges you is when you're gonna create that improvement. If it's too easy, and you're not gonna gain as much of what you need. All right, so you can have your feet slightly offset if you already are unsteady in this position and you need a little prop to hold you up. You can move it a little bit closer and then if possible, right in front of the other foot. Now they don't have to be touching heel to toe, but right up front. Now, 30 seconds is your goal with your feet in this position hanging on if you need to, but maybe you can feather that hand off the chair, or maybe you can hold with your arms folded. And for now, we'll just use this with your eyes just pointed straight ahead. So 30 seconds is your goal. Again, use the chair if you need to. End of 30 seconds, we're gonna switch it up. Other foot, other position, here we go. Again, we're working on 30 seconds. You can stagger those feet a little bit. You can use that chair a little bit if we need to. 30 seconds on that balance exercise. And do that every day this week if you can work that in. I'm sure you can, even when you're brushing your teeth. The next exercise is called a hip hinge. And the hip hinge is how we learn how to do a proper deadlift. And a deadlift is one of the greatest exercises we can do to strengthen the back 
part of our body and balance the front exercise strengthenings that we do. So a deadlift or a hip hinge, the hip hinge is the foundation. And it's very important that we get a good hip hinge so that we are bending and moving and lifting safely if we have osteoporosis in our spine. So the hip hinge looks like this. We do a, a karate chop at the hip joint where the hips go straight back behind us as our shoulders come forward. And we keep that long spine, long neck position. And as you notice, the knees can be soft. Now I like to begin this exercise and I think it's important with all of my clients that we get this movement done first and then we load it with weight. So your body weight is enough so you begin to feel this position. And here's how I'd have you start it. Hands on your thighs, up tall, bending at the hip, reaching the tailbone for the wall behind you. Slide your hands down your knees. My eyes are looking about five feet in front of me. Push through the whole foot to come up to stand and squeeze the glutes. Reach the tailbone back. Let the shoulders come down with a long spine. Press through the feet. Stand up tall. Crown of the head reaching for the ceiling. Squeeze the glutes. Slide the hands down. Notice that nice wedge we're creating that wedge between the thighs and the spine. That keeps a nice safe spine and we're building strength in the low back. And we know that targeting spinal muscles is preventative for spinal fractures. So this is a great baseline exercise for you to start. Now, if you're having back pain, by all means modify it. Don't come so far at first. Maybe you begin with just a very shallow hip hinge and you do that for a week or two and then you work into a slightly deeper hip hinge. That's okay. It's okay if you start with a shorter or smaller movement to build that tolerance in your body. Okay, so we did a posture, we did balance, we did strength. And the last thing we're gonna do is our impact exercise. So we're always gonna do either impact or power because we want that increased force on our bones in order to tell them we want them to be stronger and to build more stability. It's part of the brick house bones method. The little things we do every day to lay down a healthy new brick in our health. So today we're gonna do stomping. And stomping is just, just it's imagining you're in, uh, in the marching band like you were a long time ago, or you're uh, at a concert perhaps and the music's really good, and you're just gonna stomp. Step out, stomp. Stomp. Now, you get to have a chair if you want to. If you need something for balance or support or a countertop. And you get to gauge how hard you stomp. Now, if you haven't done any stomping before, then you may want to start relatively light to get your body used to these loads and these forces coming up through your leg. But we want that impact, that stimulus and do that to whatever level feels safe for you. Do 10 to the right, 10 to the left, and repeat that two or three rounds twice this week. All right, thank you so much for Brick House Bones coming to this video series with me and joining me on this journey. I am so grateful that you're here and if you have questions or anything specific you want to see, drop them in the comment section. But just remember, I cannot give any specific medical advice. You always want to seek the advice of a qualified professional.